So, OpenAI is in one of the most chaotic but also most fascinating phases in its history right now. On one side, they're rolling out new tools and features faster than ever, and on the other, they're battling lawsuits, cash burn, and even some awkward public missteps that made headlines across the world. It's that strange mix of progress and pressure that kind of defines where OpenAI is sitting right now. All right, let's start with one of the most interesting updates, something that's actually going to change how people use ChatGPT together. OpenAI is quietly preparing a new feature called Group Chats. The idea is simple, but powerful. Several people can join the same ChatGPT conversation and interact with each other and with the AI in one shared feed. So instead of everyone opening separate chats, the whole team can now talk and brainstorm in the same space, with ChatGPT actively participating in real time. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen something like it. Microsoft Copilot already lets users invite others into shared sessions, but OpenAI's version goes a lot further. It'll reportedly let you customize the system prompt that governs how ChatGPT behaves inside that specific group, decide when the AI should respond, either automatically or only when tagged, and even tune its presence level depending on how involved you want it to be. Basically, it's giving users way more control than what Copilot currently allows. The feature seems to be focused on structured collaboration, less chaos, fewer context switches, and smoother workflows for teams working on the same project. It could become a serious productivity tool for both companies and academic groups. And if OpenAI sticks to its pattern of releasing major updates in December during what fans now call the 12 days of OpenAI, we'll probably see group chats before the end of the year. But while that's happening on the software side, the company is also making a huge leap into a completely new sector, healthcare. OpenAI is reportedly preparing a move into the health space with a consumer-focused AI health assistant, possibly paired with a health data aggregator. Basically, tools that could manage personal medical info, give health insights, and even streamline access to care. It's their boldest move yet beyond ChatGPT. This push started earlier this year when OpenAI hired Nate Gross, the co-founder of Doximity, a physician network, as their new head of healthcare strategy. Then came Ashley Alexander, a former Instagram executive who joined as vice president of health products. The company even presented at the HLTH conference in October, where Gross revealed that ChatGPT now sees nearly 800 million weekly active users, and a massive portion of them are already using it for health advice. Now, big tech has tried this before, and mostly failed. Google shut down its health service in 2011, Amazon killed the Halo tracker in 2023, and Microsoft's health vault never really took off. But analysts think OpenAI could actually make it work. As one investor put it, people used to Google their health questions, but now they're starting to turn to AI chatbots for answers. So OpenAI might just be in the right place at the right time. Still, things aren't all smooth sailing. The company just got hit with a major legal blow in Germany. A Munich court ruled that OpenAI violated copyright law by using song lyrics to train its models without proper licenses. The case was brought by Jima, Germany's main music rights organization, representing the artists behind nine songs. The court decided that both the memorization of lyrics in language models and their reproduction through ChatGPT's outputs count as copyright infringement. That means the artists are entitled to compensation. OpenAI argued that its models don't literally store text, that they just learn patterns and probabilities, but the court didn't buy it. The ruling said that the texts are reproduced both internally during training and externally through ChatGPT's answers, so the creators deserve payment. Jema called it a landmark victory for copyright law and a big step toward ensuring that artists get fair remuneration when their work is used to train AI. The decision sets a legal precedent across Europe and could impact not only lyrics but potentially all types of creative content. OpenAI said it disagrees with the verdict and is considering next steps but it also emphasized that the ruling only applies to a limited set of lyrics and doesn't affect regular users in Germany. Still, it's the first major case of its kind in Europe, and it's sending shockwaves through the tech industry. And while all of that is happening, the company's public image took another hit last week. OpenAI's chief financial officer, Sarah Fryer, caused an uproar when she suggested that the US government should backstop OpenAI's massive chip and infrastructure investments basically meaning taxpayers would help guarantee the company's $1.4 trillion spending spree on data centers and GPUs. That comment instantly set off alarm bells. 
Critics compared it to your parents co-signing your lease. If you don't pay, they're responsible. Except in this case, the parents are American taxpayers, and the rent is $1.4 trillion. The backlash was immediate. People were furious at the idea of a half trillion dollar private company expecting public support for its debts. Fryer tried to walk it back on LinkedIn, saying she meant that the government should work with private companies to boost US AI infrastructure, not that it should guarantee OpenAI's loans. But the damage was done. The comment raised questions about how OpenAI actually plans to pay for all those chips, especially since the company isn't profitable yet and just reported $12 billion in losses last quarter. By Thursday, Sam Altman had to step in personally. He clarified that OpenAI isn't asking for any government guarantees and doesn't want taxpayers involved at all. He said the company expects $20 billion in revenue this year and aims for hundreds of billions annually by 2030, mainly through enterprise AI and consumer devices. He also stressed that if OpenAI fails, it should fail. That's how capitalism works. No bailouts, no exceptions. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump's administration has made AI infrastructure a national priority, but his AI czar, David Sachs, quickly responded that there will be no federal bailout for AI. So that whole episode turned into one of the biggest PR headaches OpenAI's had in months, and they had to scramble to fix it. But here's where it gets even crazier, because despite those losses, OpenAI's scale is still exploding. The company just announced it now has over 1 million business customers, making it the fastest growing business platform in history. That number includes everyone paying directly for ChatGPT for work or for API access through the developer platform. They've already signed on massive clients, names like Amgen, Cisco, Booking.com, Morgan Stanley, T-Mobile, Target, and Thermo Fisher Scientific. ChatGPT for work now has over 7 million seats, up 40% in just two months, and ChatGPT enterprise licenses are up ninefold year over year. Part of this rapid adoption comes from the fact that people already use ChatGPT personally. So when companies roll it out, employees adapt fast, and ROI shows up almost immediately. OpenAI has also launched a bunch of new tools for businesses. They introduced something called Company Knowledge, which lets ChatGPT access and reason across internal tools like Slack, Google Drive, SharePoint, and GitHub, all using a version of GPT-5 optimized for tool use and citations. Codex, their code generation model, has seen usage skyrocket 10x since August, with companies like Cisco cutting code review times by half. And with AgentKit, teams can now deploy custom agents within days instead of months. There's also a push into multimodal capabilities, image, video, and audio. The Image Generation API, Sora 2, Realtime API, and GPT Realtime all allow full workflow integration across formats. Intercom, for example, built its Fin AI customer service agent on OpenAI Tech and cut its development cycles from quarters to days. Databricks just integrated OpenAI directly into enterprise data pipelines to help companies build and run agents right where their data lives. Even consumer companies like Shopify, Etsy, Walmart, PayPal, and Salesforce are integrating with ChatGPT through the new Agentic Commerce Protocol, which brings shopping directly into conversational flows. And platforms like Canva, Figma, Spotify, and Zillow are plugging their apps directly into ChatGPT. The enterprise growth is massive, but it's also expensive to sustain. That brings us back to OpenAI's cash burn problem, especially with Sora, their AI video generator. According to recent reports, Sora could be costing the company around $5 billion per year, or roughly $15 million every single day. To put that in perspective, a single 10-second clip generated by Sora could cost about $1.3 in compute resources. Even Sora's lead developer, Bill Peebles, admitted that the economics are completely unsustainable. It's wild because even though the app is only available to a limited number of users, it's already generating billions of dollars in expenses. Sam Altman himself acknowledged that they launched Sora without a solid plan to recoup the costs. It's that classic Silicon Valley move. Focus on growth first, figure out profit later. OpenAI has started limiting users to 30 free videos per day and charging $4 for every 10 more, but even that might not be enough. People said they'll probably have to lower free limits soon because they simply won't have enough GPUs to handle the load. On top of that, OpenAI is now facing copyright complaints from major Japanese studios, including Studio Ghibli, Bandai Namco, and Square Enix, 
who've accused them of using copyrighted material to train Sora. So it's not just a money problem, it's a legal one too. And while OpenAI continues to burn through billions, its main rival Anthropic is taking a completely different route, and it's working. According to the Wall Street Journal, Anthropic expects to break even by 2028, while OpenAI isn't expected to be profitable until 2030. Anthropic's projected revenue by 2028 is $70 billion, compared to OpenAI's expected $74 billion in losses over the same period. Their leaner, business-first approach is clearly paying off. Anthropic's API revenue in 2025 is already double OpenAI's, largely because enterprise clients see Claude as the more stable and efficient option. They're scaling quietly, without flashy product launches or billion-dollar video generators, and it's making investors pay attention. So what do you think? Is OpenAI expanding too fast for its own good, or are these massive moves exactly what's needed to stay ahead? Drop your thoughts below. I really want to hear your take on this. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit subscribe, leave a like, and I'll catch you in the next one.